What are the general conclusions about the influence of built structures around the Tonle Sap Basin and upstream? Development of built structures at the basin level is on its way. As a result, there is a push for hydropower development all over the basin. Changes in Mekong flows are not just due to hydropower development, but also to irrigation and flood control works. It is clear now that changes in Mekong flows will have a major impact on Cambodian fisheries. Even at the local level, more than 14,000 built structures have been identified around the lake, and this is a very conservative assessment. Under the five-year plan, priorities include the rehabilitation of 2,000 kilometres of roads and of existing irrigation systems. Samdek Prime Minister Hun Sen highlighted the importance of ensuring that all resources from both the government and external development partners are directed to priorities and sectors chosen by the government. It is time now that resources begin to be properly directed and effectively used to maximise the benefits for the disadvantaged and deprived, to lift them into the mainstream, he said. In this spirit, and after a review of the situation, some recommendations can be issued. In developing hydropower resources, environmental and social impacts should be carefully integrated, and specific studies linking changes in volume, timing and duration of the flood to consequences for fisheries, food supply and livelihoods should be undertaken. In view of protecting the resource, it is also crucial to ensure sustained connection of water bodies and to specify how to maintain critical fish habitats before projects start. Mitigation measures that keep enough water flowing to preserve the integrity of the aquatic system should be considered. At the national level, when planning infrastructure development, it is recommended to avoid irreversible changes to water flows, and in particular, to avoid breaking the natural connectivity between various water bodies around the Tonle Sap. Road planning must pay interest to the poorest groups by clarifying how they might better benefit from the construction. For this, it is necessary to adopt a decentralised approach by involving local institutions. Systematic consultations between national and local stakeholders will help. Specific training of commune councils is required in order to build effective communication channels between local officials, engineers and villagers. This would help achieving more equitable distribution of water and would minimise conflicts. In conclusion, in conclusion, the situation is favourable because the environment and productivity of the Tonle Sap Lake are still good. To ensure a balanced and prosperous Cambodia for future generations by preserving the exceptional richness of the country's natural resources is another political and management challenge in the years to come.